Welcome to another video of my NIM SDL2 Game Development for Beginners video series number 2, adding walls and explaining image depth. In this video, we will create a new wall object and then place wall objects around the window. We will also add a player object and restructure the code. We used to move the astronaut image around to be the player object 1. And then I will showcase and explain depth and how it can be implemented and used for. First, we will create a new object called wall obj with a wall ref to it for its fields. We will add image as image, which will obviously take the image ref object we had used in the previous video, and then add x and y as float64 to serve as coordinates. Here we go. Wall, the ref to wall obj, like above, to the wall obj, which is object of root object an actual object with inheritance enabled for later usage and then it takes for its first field image of type image which is this one we used before for our astronaut image and then the coordinates. In the first video we used a separate tuple variable to hold the x and y coordinates for our astronaut image but in this video we will do a bit of restructuring. First things first let's make a new var section in it we will initialize a new image type object to use as the texture for our walls. Then we also make declare a new walls sequence of type wall to hold all of our numerous wall objects like this walls as sequence of type wall. Now we will load a new texture to serve as the texture for our walls. Simply make a 32 by 32 pixels rectangle of some non-black color in Microsoft Paint or some other drawing software and save it as wall.png in our img folder. Once you have done that, we will simply copy paste the code we used to load our astronaut texture but with img slash wall.png for the file name and replace if not image.load with if not wall.load, our initialized empty image object type variable we created earlier. Now we're going to add wall objects to our walls sequence. We will do this via two while loops, one for horizontal wall placement and one for vertical wall placement. We will need a new variable here to use as the x axis like this. Now we will need a while loop that will add a wall object into our wall sequence starting at location 0, 0 of x and y and then after placing a wall object into our wall sequence, one at the top of our window and another at the bottom. The loop will move by 32 pixels to the right and repeat this till we filled the window with walls on top and the bottom. We used screen h constant over here we made in the first video minus wall h which is 32 pixels in size for the second wall object placement because that will place it on the bottom of the window. Remember that every texture has an origin from where it is drawn so if you want to place a wall object on the bottom, you must place it its height above bottom. Now let's do the same for vertical wall placement. Let's copy paste the above code and change it a bit. Change the first walls x into walls y and then repeat the process over the loop and switch around the arguments in walls.add code with y coordinate in the focus. Okay, now that we have placed wall objects into our wall sequence, we have to render them all. To do this, we simply copy paste the code we use for our astronaut image from the first video and add a for loop. Okay, now that we are rendering our walls. We also have to free the texture at the end of the program. So let's not forget that. Let's add it below here. Now let's run this and see the results. F6. Here we go. We have walls around the whole window. Now we will do a bit of restructuring. We will remove the tuple we use for our astronaut's coordinates by copying what we did for our 
wall object by literally copy pasting the wall object definition up top but also adding speed as a field and then renaming it Now we will replace this whole section of code with this. The first line is just renamed to player image. And then in the next two, second and third, I took the code we used to truly center our astronaut image and put the code here because it is wasteful to do a simple image displacement in a loop that runs every single frame. And then we initialized our player object using the player image we had created above and did the coordinates calculations above and then put them for the x and y, and then put the speed that we had in a separate variable before, now for the its field here. We now also have to remove the old code using a tuple for coordinates in the render code and under places. So, Visual Studio Code is showing us here that there's an error. So, we have to rename image to player image over here, and then second error, here are the positions we used earlier. We're just going to remove these entirely and then in the render we replace image with player image and then for the positions we do player.x and also remove the image displacement of course repeat this here and displacement removal again then we also have to change here also in the free procedure so player image instead and then for the positions we do player just copy paste it and then instead of image speed it's going to be player dot speed and copy paste it and that's it no more errors the restructuring is now complete now let's run this to see if we forgot anything f6 okay still works everything is fine now lastly i will tell you about depth into the games and other multimedia software depth is simply the order in which textures are rendered drawn onto the screen. This order makes some textures be drawn over others when they overlap, one is on top of another. This depth can be used, for example, in a 2D game, say we had a plane on the bottom of the window that we moved with arrow keys, just like our astronaut image. Then we also had a background that constantly moved downwards and wrapped around, creating an illusion of movement. Then if that background had some islands drawn on it, and other scenery, if our plane's depth was above the backgrounds, we would be drawn on top of it. If we weren't on top of it, we wouldn't even see our plane. This would create an illusion that we are high above. Let's run our program now, so I can show you what I mean. So F6. As you can see, our astronaut's player's texture disappears under the walls. That happens because we are rendering drawing our walls after our players one which then draws the walls over the players one so if we simply put the players render code above the walls one our players texture will be drawn above the walls so let's go ahead and switch the order in which we render so here we render our player here are our walls so let's cut this and put it above like this move some empty spaces and let's run this here we go our astronaut's player's image texture is now drawn above the walls. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like, share and subscribe as well as click the bell icon if you liked it. You can also follow me on Twitter of the same name and support me on Patreon. If you had any problems with any part of the video, let me know in the comment section. The code for this video is in the link in the description as well as the link to this video's documentation script as a form of offline tutorial. Have fun.